What's up, people? I am back for another video. Today, we are reviewing, we are starting the Nolan Trilogy. <clears throat> reviewing, in my opinion, my tie for my favorite Batman film, Batman Begins. I remember seeing this in the theater back in 2005, and it just was like such a big deal especially because this was like the first batman film like i mentioned since 1997 so almost eight years we hadn't had a batman film and keep in mind we already had we had we have had a plethora of comic book films since then you know obviously i'll start with like you know the x-men films and then the the rainy spider-man movies and then the multiple x-men sequels and even some of the other spider-man films i mean uh CBMs like Hulk and yeah, those didn't do well, but largely there was a bunch of CBMs by this point, but DC was still largely only doing TV. Because at this point, you still had like the DCAU still going and all that. So this is like the first Batman anything, like film wise, in a long fucking time. And not just Batman, DC. DC was like on a break for a while because Batman and Robin really did hurt them. So for this to be their comeback, and it really hit, because it was a nice mix of, obviously Nolan's going for a realistic tone, which to me, I think, in the, in retrospect, I think it, it's almost to its detriment. I think they went too realistic. I think this one specifically had the nice balance of still being a feeling like a CDM, but also still having that realism where i think the sequels go a little too far maybe not the dark knight but definitely rises like they go too far in the realistic realm where i'm gonna be real like some of those fights don't age well and i said it last night i don't think bale's batman specifically is batman not in this film but in the later ones does not hold up um i just don't i um I don't love what they do with Gotham in the sequels, especially how go good Gotham looks in this. Like, you still... It's not Burton's Gotham, but it has a uniqueness about it. And it still looks realistic. I don't know why they felt the need to change the city. So we get out... I mean, I, I part of me is almost like they're just too lazy. They got too caught up in everything else. They're like, you know, it's not a big deal. We just make Gotham just look like a normal city. It's basically just Chicago or L.A. Like, it's just kind of disappointing. But this film was the much needed return for the, well, not just for the character, but for DC. I mean, this, in my opinion, is my, well, probably my favorite origin story. I love the perfect, or I mean, and the funny thing is they don't start with the origin. You just kind of start off with Batman just already traveling the world. You don't get the origin until he's training. You know, he, it, it kind of starts off, obviously, as training with Rage or Ducard which is his fake name, because obviously we'll get the reveal later. But Liam Neeson, the score is great. And then obviously you get a flashback while, you know, there's one of Bruce's training things. That's when they do the flashback to the, the night his parents were murdered, which was well done in this. And then obviously the moment with the bat, you know, him seeing the bats. <clears throat> And then the training in the, the League of Shadows, which I actually love those moments. You know, the scenes where he's just training with Rage in the start of the film is so great. That that sword fight in the start is so iconic to me. And I just think all around everything was perfect. You know, Bruce... Um, uh, Bale really nailed Bruce when, especially when when he became like the, they really showcased that Bruce Wayne was the mask. They really, I thought, especially in this film, you know, like the the scene when he's first introduced as that playboy Bruce Wayne when you first see him, is done so well. childhood friend who's turned lawyer <coughs> attorney <coughs> Rachel Dawes who I thought Katie Holmes does a pretty good job in this <coughs> and it sucks that um in my opinion I think it was a mistake for 
<coughs> Katie Holmes to not come back, because in my opinion, Maggie Gyllenhaal is the only thing about the Dark Knight I don't really like. <coughs> I'm gonna say it. I just think Maggie Gyllenhaal is not good. I mean, we all everyone says she's not how unattractive she is. That's part of it, but for me, it's more how she's a bad actress, at least in that film. Like everyone else, great performances, you know. And in her, it's just, especially in the death scene. So, it just, and I'm going to say, it, her and Bruce did not have chemistry either. Her and Christian Bale, Maggie and Christian Bale, I have no chemistry compared to, I'm going to say, it, I thought Katie, Katie Holmes and Kirsten Bale actually feel like they had chemistry. Um, I thought this film is paced perfectly. It's two hours and 20 minutes, so it's a little long, but it's paced perfectly. Um, fucking Gary Oldman is, as fucking Gordon is, he's to me the definitive live action Gordon. I mean, you know, just the look at him, like he's a perfect young Gordon. He has the mustache. He has the look right. You know, instantly just the start of this movie, like when they first meet the meeting, you already have that like chemistry between him and Batman, you know, and just the first scene they meet. And, and of the three, this is easily where Batman's voice is not mean, you know, mean worthy like it is in like those later ones where it's just over. What did you like? Like the where's the trigger like that shit? Where's the trigger? Like shit like that. Like at least in this, his voice was not over the top. It was almost like a whisper. It was done well and then they just fucked it up in the sequels. You kind of, as much as I love Dark Knight, it kind of started in that film. If we're being real, some of the really over the, like, the, the voice, I don't know what they were going for with that. Especially because it almost undermines the whole realism thing. If you're going for a realistic thing, Batman would have a voice changer. Like, he would have a voice changer. You know what I mean? It just feels so odd that he did, and they just decided to go with this, I don't know what Nolan was thinking. You know, and the thing is, I'll admit, I wasn't thinking about it at the time when I was watching these movies. This is obviously something I noticed later, but when you do notice it, you can't unnotice it, you know? It's like... Um, I also just don't really think the fights are that great either. I, I just... In this one, it was good. Actually, the the introduction of Batman when he first suits up is so well done. And then, you know, I love the I'm Batman scene in this. It doesn't just feel like it's a ripoff of the 89 one. It's an homage, but it doesn't feel like it's just a ripoff. It still feels like its own film. The only real big criticism I have is Scarecrow. I don't like how much of a red herring. Um, um, I talked about this Marsh. He said he's a MacGuffin. He's, it, he really is. He's a MacGuffin slash red herring. He's a fake out. They make you think he's the bad guy, but he's not. And it sucks because... Cillian Murphy's a great actor. That's why I'm like, I'm very much open if he wants to play Scarecrow again in a film. I wouldn't mind it. Like, But like, actually let him be Scarecrow this time and actually let him be the main bad guy. I think he could do it. Because I feel like in this, he's just kind of wasted. Especially in the end. He just gets like, fucking... Rachel just tases him and that's it. In the, the scene where like the gas is out everywhere and he's on the horseback... You think he looks menacing, and then she just tases him, and he just gets knocked out, and then he right, and the horse rides off with him on it. it. It's like, holy shit, he just gets, he really, they really did just kind of embarrass him. He just, like, he has the one scene where he does do the fear gas to Batman, but that's it. And then once Batman does the fear talks to him, he's pretty much a joke, which, don't get me wrong, that scene is still well done. The scene where you see him tripping out and you see Batman's face turn into like a demon. That looked good. But after that, he just kind of becomes a joke because Rachel just tases him. And he just gets knocked out. And that's it. It's And then obviously he comes back in Batman uh, in the Dark Knight for like a second. But yeah, they do kind of, I feel like in those movies, they do kind of waste Scarecrow. But yeah. I think this is my only real criticism with this film is that I think they could 
Because the real bad guy is Raish, which don't be wrong, that's that reveal scene is still really done well when Bruce is at his party and Rage uh, 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 um, appears and we get that reveal. It's done so well. The final, I would have liked more of a final fight between Rage and Batman, especially because, you know, you had the fight in the beginning when he's not even Batman. I felt like that was more of a fight than we got, the, we got in this. I would have liked a bit more. It was more of a battle of words and i mean it was a fight but it was more about them like talking at each other i felt like than the actual fight you know i would have liked it have been a little bit more of a battle but that's fine you know and obviously you get that moment where he says i'm not gonna kill you but i don't have to save you basically that line which basically is killing him but anyway overall i i love this movie this movie the score the feel Falcone, the actor who played Falcone, he died. Uh, he died relatively either recently or within the either this year or like last year. He is really good. I really enjoy him as Falcone in this. Falcone's great. Um, he's he's not necessarily a bad guy, but he's like one of them. Obviously, the swear to me seems great. The movie's paced perfectly too, and the the this the I love just the shots of Gotham. You know, there's those outer shots where you just see the city. It looks so good. And you do have that gritty feel, which that's the other problem I have with Nolan, like with the last two a little bit. Maybe not Dark Knight, but definitely with Rises. I don't feel like Gotham has that grittiness to it. That's one of the problems. Like in this film, even just like the scene where you have Bruce and his family just standing in the alley after they leave the, the play, you know, left the show, you know, left the theater. That like that feels gritty. Like you're just standing, you can tell like it looks gritty. You have like the trash. It looks like it's yeah. This is a fucked up Gotham. And then just the next two, they just I feel like I hate how they just dumbed it down and just made it a generic city. You know, I think they should have stuck to the Gotham they had in this because Gotham was amazing in this film. I, Gotham was actually was a character in this, and it should be that way. Whatever problems I have with the Batman, that's the one thing I will give that movie over the Nolan trilogy, or at least the last two, is that the fact that Gotham is like an actual city and it feels lived in. So overall, this is like a probably a 9.9, 10 out of, probably 9.9. .9. I think they could have done more with Scarecrow, but 9.9 .9 out of 10 is very much close to a 10 out of 10 film. It's perfect origin story. For Batman, not just for Batman, but just the, it's one of my favorite. Or it's like this film, and then I would probably put the the first Spider Man after it. But this film is so fucking good. This film, first Spider Man, Man of Steel are probably my trinity of origin stories. Like this is like this film is done so perfectly. It and this is the perfect way to like reintroduce Batman. What well, not just in the film, but. It saved the character because largely, yeah, yeah, the animated series and yet all like the DCAU shows. But Batman at that at that point, DC was still only seen as like a TV company. You know, don't be wrong. I don't blame them for being hesitant on not doing anything for almost ten years at that point. But this was a perfect way for DC to like reintroduce themselves in the film world, and what a hell of a way to do it. And I think they did it. And obviously the trilogy, Dark Knight for a long time, probably will, like was my favorite CDM comic book film of all time for a while. It's up there. It, I have some issues with it. I would have liked more Two-Face. I don't like Mag Maggie Gyllenhaal. As, I, I think they could have found somebody else. And stuff. If, if, the, if Katie Holmes didn't come back, they could have found someone better. I just don't think Maggie Jill. It's not even just her look. She just was not good. Her death scene is it almost is meme worthy. <laughs> you know, it's her acting is not really that good, especially compared to the level of actors that are in that film. And then she just damn, sticks, sticks out like a sore thumb. But yeah, it's gonna be fun though to go through Dark Knight next week because Dark Knight was one of my favorite. That's definitely one of my favorite theater experiences. Even if I have some issues with the film, it is one of my favorite theater experiences for sure. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's next week. Um, tomorrow I will be reviewing a movie my friend Steve recommended me called Pure Luck. As All I know is it has Danny Glover in it. 
and it's like a comedy from 91, 1991. So I'll be reviewing that tomorrow. And uh, yeah, let's get into Batman Begins. <laughs> I love the opening of this film. It just kind of jumps right into it. You just see Bruce travel the world. <laughs> you get a pretty cool fight scene where he fights this like big ass dude and he's like fighting a bunch of people. This was like his basically almost <laughs> way to get um <laughs> to the League of Shadows. Like this film gets going. And I actually do think it was a good idea. I love that both this one and 89 both did not start with the, the Wade murders. <clears throat> I get why BBS had to do it because you're establishing a new Batman at that point. So I kind of understand. And I also think thematically made sense for that movie. <clears throat> but I like that in this they didn't start with it. You didn't get the Wayne murders for a while. It was Bruce's training. I actually think, yeah, you get the fight scene with him and... I'll, I'll call him Ducard. That's his alias for a while, even though he's really rage. <clears throat> and I will say that fight was great between him and that, even though it's only like a training fight, that fucking, the choreography was good. Liam Neeson was saying some real shit, even though he is a bad guy, you know, he's a bad guy later on. <clears throat> even though he's a bad guy later on, I do love his speed, the speech he gives. It's just, it's stuff you can one. It's just a good master scene in general, you know. And then when Bruce, I think there's like a scene where he has like something about his fears, and that's when you get the origin story. And then you get like what happened to his parents. And I actually do love the little scenes of when there's the scene after the murder where Alfred, you know, Bruce is back home, and Alfred's comforting, and Bruce is like, "I kind of blame myself because you know if I didn't just." Said I had to leave the the the, move, the theater. I, my parents would be like, it's a real scene. And Michael Caine, I should have. I, I I I'm fucking mad at myself for not even mentioning him. Michael Caine is great as Alfred. I do think, and Rises is not Michael Caine. This is more the writing. I do think they make him a little too naggy in Dark Knight Rises, but in this film and Dark Knight, he is fucking great. I love Alfred, especially in this movie. This is probably of the three. Probably my favorite Michael Caine as Alfred is in this. Especially the end when he saves Bruce. You know? And just Michael Caine's a great actor. So just the way him and Christian Bale have that nice dynamic together. So um, so that was good. And then you, know, then you have the bat scene, obviously, where he falls into the cave and the bats come. And then... Pretty much, um, then he has to fall in out the League of Shadow, Shadows. They, they, their plan is to destroy Gotham, but Bruce decides, refuses, causes an explosion, which kills a bunch of people. But anyway, pretty still well done scene. He saves Ducard, kind of leaves it behind, and then he goes back home to, to the Gotham. Um, he, uh, gets reacquainted with Rachel Dawes. And then she, then we have the trial of uh, Joe Chill, which is the, you know, the man who killed Bruce's parents. And Bruce has kind of an argument with um, Rachel Dawes because he wants to, he wants him dead, basically. So his plan is he's going to bring a gun. I'm pretty sure this is also in a comic. I could be wrong. He was going to be, he was going to shoot Joe Chill. Obviously, didn't end up happening. Something and someone else ended up shooting Joe Chill, 
And then him and Rachel Dawes get into an argument, which I thought this scene was very well done. I think Katie Katie Holmes really showcased her acting in this in this scene. So then this is where they have the meeting with Falcone, which I'll admit was a very well done scene. And that actor too is crazy because he in if you remember him, he's in Rush Hour. He's the bad guy in the first Rush Hour movie, and he's like this proper British guy in this. He really nails. That Italian mobster, like, that accent is like, it's like, what the fuck? Like, it's insane, like, how different he sounds. Because in Rush Hour, he's this pop, let me say, he's a posh British guy in Rush Hour. So in this, he's like, he really nails that Italian mob, mobster voice, which that's what Falcone is. He's an Italian mobster, basically. So it makes sense, so... So you had that scene, um, then Bruce gives a, um... You, you might recognize that's um the the, the homeless guy was in a was in a he's in a couple of movies he was a but i think his name is butch he was in a fucking um guy Ritchie movie he's in a couple of guy Ritchie movies i'm trying to think i don't know what um So, um, and then that's when Bruce basically gets the idea for the Batman character, and you have that transition where he becomes the billionaire playboy, uh, Rucker Howard's in this, who he's such a, and I, I love Rucker Howard in this, even though he's a minor character, he's not a big character in the movie, um, oh, fuck, okay, Mine went blank. It was fucking Snatch. It's the Russian guy from Snatch. He's in this movie. Um, but yeah, back to... Um, back to Rucker Howard. Even though he's not in this movie a lot, like, he isn't. He... In, in reality, if you think about it, he's kind of a small character. He's uh, one of the heads of the of uh, Wayne Enterprises. who's trying to take over, basically. Um, he's a good asshole. I really do. Especially the scene with, um, f um, with, uh, Lucius Fox, which is played by Morgan Freeman. He's, he's fucking great in this. I love the inclusion of Lucian, Lucius Fox. Because he's a character who, he is a minor in the Batman world, but I do love that in this, he makes the tech. Which, the tech is more realistic. Like, okay, let's, I guess we could talk about the Tumblr now. The Tumblr... I I don't love as much now compared to what I did at the time. I understand why they went with that design for that movie. But after seeing like Affleck's, I prefer Batmobile that looks like a car. But Affleck's was perfect because it was like a mix of a car but, and the tank. Which I actually like the idea of the Batmobile being a tank. It kind of makes sense. But I think that that one looked too tanky. To the point, like, it looks like a military vehicle than, like, a Batmobile. But I get it. It was realistic. It's it's an actual car that's there. Like, I think it was, like, an actual car they used. And I do still think it looks cool. Like, I don't necessarily hate the design. I just, you know, it's not my favorite Batmobile design. It's just compared to, like, the 89 one or Affleck's. <clears throat> I'll take it over um, Pattinson's. I'll say that. Um, so... And then, you know, introduce the suit. They start building the cave. Like, I love the slow build-up to Batman. And then, obviously, he's introduced when he attacks Falcone. And that's when you get the, I'm Batman scene. Um, and then, after that, he saves Rachel from being robbed. And then, um, basically, they have a discussion. Um, and that's when we get the introduction of the Bruce Wayne character with Bruce Wayne and I will say the billionaire playboy character. I will say Christian Bale really nailed it. Especially that introduction when he's like in his fucking like his, I think it was a Lamborghini. When he's in his, his Andrews in his Lamborghini and like a bunch of chicks with him. That is fucking that's Bruce Wayne. And then that's when oh I, I didn't mention but throughout the film um, Cillian Murphy, um, uh, Scarecrow, Jonathan Crane, um, 
just experimenting on criminals and stuff like that. And man, it's so sad. They could have done so much more with Scarecrow. He should not have just been a red herring just so you get on a fake out. Like, because even in the trailers, I remember them, even in the trailers, they were making it seem like he was going to be the main bad guy. Like, I remember that. Like, they made it seem he was going to be the main bad guy. And then, no, he's just a fake out. I, would, I understand you couldn't have made him the main villain because I get what they were going for. They wanted to have Rage be the main bad guy. But I do think Scarecrow could have done been I also would have rather just Scarecrow just been taken out. Like the scene where Batman puts the fear that should have been the end of them. I would have been fine if that was the end. Instead of having that scene where he's riding on the horse and then he just gets electrocuted by you even like base Batman didn't even take him out. It was fucking it was it was Rachel who took him out. I was like eh I would, it would have made more sense if it was just bad. Like, the scene where Batman gets him later, because there's a scene initially where uh, Batman attacks and takes out some of Scarecrow's guys. Well, before, that's where you get the you get the swear to me scene, which was very, I'll admit, it's memeable. And I will say, I do prefer the fighting in this because it's cut better. They're not doing these long shots of him fighting. It. It's like, almost edited like where he will just take people away it's done in a way where it's it makes more sense than the way they fucking did it in the in um the later ones where especially by rises the fights are just so bad <laughs> it's like like you should not have tried to do like a normal shot of the, of the fights you should have did these kind of different cuts but it wasn't like that annoying form of cutting out at the time a lot of movies did it was still cut in a way where you could still see what's going on but it was done in a way where it was almost batman like taking people especially the scene where he just like opened his cape and he just kind of grabs a guy that's the kind of fighting i prefer if he's not going to be like uber fighting like how batfleck is right so that's fine i just think in the later ones they go too far but so after taking out um scarecrow's people scarecrow uses the gas on Batman and Batman freaks out and yeah he ends up getting caught on fire but then gets, he basically gets injured but uh he ends up getting saved by Lucius and Alfred and then basically he just goes back for uh, um he goes back to Scarecrow later after Scarecrow uh has a scene with uh Falcone and makes him freak out because he does the gas to him and then it turns out he's actually working for Ra's al Ghul, which we get the reveal later on, which was very disappointing. So the plan is they want to use the fear gas on Gotham. And I do love the scenes where he's talking to Alfred Batman, not Alfred, uh, Jim Gordon, Batman. Those scenes where he's just, the first scene where he's actually talking to Gordon the first time is so good. It, it's, even though he's not a commissioner at this point, um, the main commissioner of the film, he's he's kind of just there. He's just there to be like, oh, this is going to be the spot that Gordon's going to have down the road. So, um, he manages, oh, I think they kidnap Rachel Dawes and then they do the fear gas on her so she's like about to die potentially because she took like a heavy dose. So Batman shows up and that's where he, uh, I do love to, um, fucking uh, Scarecrow's reaction. He's like, here comes the Batman. The way he says it is pretty funny. And then, yeah, so the Batman pretty much finally beats him. He uses the fear gas against, fear gas against Scarecrow. And I'll admit, I love this scene. And he starts seeing. I will say, I also love the effects, too, like where you're on the fear gas. It looks like they did it in a way where almost like you are almost on the fear gas when you're you're seeing it. They did a good job with that and that scene where he, he started to see Batman as a fucking demon. It is a, such a great scene. I remember seeing that in a theater, kind of freaking out. It's like, holy shit. Uh, Bruce has the cure. Because uh, Fox made a cure. <coughs> To the fear gas, but the police arrive and 
raid the place, but they're going to shoot at Batman. They don't know Batman at this point, so it makes sense that they would just be like, shoot anything that moves. We don't know who this Batman guy is. So, Bat, uh, with the help of Jim Gordon, he manages to get Rachel out. And uh, they, she, he basically takes her back to the... And I'm going to say, Rachel and Batman have a much better love story than I would say Vicky did in the in Batman 89, for sure. Um, I think, too, they didn't force the relationship stuff. It just kind of happens naturally. It's towards the end that they kind of go that direction. Whereas I feel like a lot of the movie, they were keeping it more about just Bruce becoming Batman and stuff. They put it in the background. You know, there was a little bit of that there. Because I think the movie does mention they did have a thing before Bruce left, you know, for some years. to You know, obviously for training. So. But it's not like forced. Oh. Uh, Force like Vicky Vicky Vales was in eighty nine. Love that movie, but I to this day really feel like that that was forced. But anyway, uh, I really do like, um, like I said, Gotham just in general, just looks so good. And then the scene where we get the big reveal that Rage is still alive, and that Ducard is actually Rage, which I do like that reveal, but it does undermine Scarecrow. Scarecrow is just like a side villain. I, he, To me, he, he deserves to be a main villain. I mean, Arkham City, Arkham Knight, he's pretty much the main villain in that game, aside from, I guess, Arkham Knight, but really, if we're going to be real, it's really Scarecrow, so in that game, and even Arkham City has a pretty big level. He's not the main villain, but he's he has a pretty big part in that game. But definitely Arkham Knight. He's the main villain in that. So I just feel like in a film, he deserves it. So. So. But yeah, so Bruce has everybody to leave because um, the plan is they're going to release the fear toxin and basically destroy Gotham because that's what that, that's what the, the League of Shadows wants to do, which I will say the the back and forth between Bruce and Raish is done very well. Like, Liam Neeson, especially when he's revealed to be the bad guy, is done so fucking well. I Part of me is like, I would not mind them. I was saying for a long time in DC, not now, but like, I remember like up and right around like when Man of Steel was out, I was like, Liam Neeson would not be a bad Deathstroke. You know, I was thinking around that time, he could probably be a decent Deathstroke. Because he really nailed it as Rage in this movie. So. Um, Batman has a quick fight with Rage. But Rage realizes the the, the, the Wayne Manor is about to come down because there's a fire. Alfred manages to save Bruce. Because Bruce is under a, like a part of the roof. Came down. Manages to save Alfred. Alfred manages to save Bruce. And basically Batman goes into action and has to save the city. Essentially, that's like the film is paced like pretty perfectly. It's not too long, it's not too short either. You know, the gas is released and everybody starts freaking out. Um, Alfred manages to save, um, um, save uh, some kids because, like, um, so the guy, the the swear, the guy that Batman said swear to me to had a gun on them, and then yeah, he knocks him out. Um, Batman manages to come in with a tumbler, lets Jim ride it so he can confront Scarecrow, not Scarecrow, um, confront Rage, and then this is the scene, yeah, where, um, Rachel takes out, takes out, uh, Scarecrow, and it was kind of weak. I would have rather just Scarecrow just been still in jail after... Like, the scene where ba after Batman beats him, you know, he just sees the demon. That should have been the end of Scarecrow in that movie. I, it felt like almost like, not going to say humiliation, but, and I get it, Batman was dealing with the real big bad, but it still felt weird to me to have, like, Scarecrow just ride a horse, which that scene, that visual looked cool, and I thought this outfit he had looked cool, but then just Rachel just electrocutes him with, yeah, he gets tased. She tases him. 
essentially. He just gets knocked the fuck out, and then the horse just rides off with him on it. It's like, really? I, I would. Uh, Scarecrow deserved a little bit better than that. Then it just stuck with Batman. After the fight with Batman, he should have just been in jail, and that's kind of the end of Scarecrow. It, I I guess Christopher Nolan felt like they, he felt like he should have been part of that final act, but if you were gonna have him there, I didn't really. I don't know. I don't love him just getting electrocuted. And then just knocked. I would have rather you're gonna do that. Just have Batman just show up and then like do something with the cape. Like he flies down and then just knocks out, knocks Scarecrow. I would have been fine with that. Not just gets electrocuted. Just, I don't know. But then yeah, we get the final face up on this on the train, which I love this scene. I do, even though you know I do mean it sometimes. Like where Batman's like, I'm not gonna kill you, but I won't save you. I'm like, that's still killing him, Bruce. <laughs> Come on. Like, whatever I think of it, it's still a great line. I still think that's a great line. And, you know, and then basically, yeah, Rage kind of accept he accepts his fate, essentially. Like, he kind of closes his eyes, kind of ready to brace for the crash. Then Gotham saved pretty much. <coughs> and then Rachel and Bruce have a moment. <coughs> Bruce is, you know, in the charred, you know, inside of his house, Wayne Manor. <coughs> and then Batman and Gordon, you know, this is where we have the debut of the bat, the bat signal, which was cool. And actually, I do like the symbol. I don't mind the bat symbol for this film, for these films. I thought the batterings for this movie was always kind of cool. Um, <coughs> and then you had the scene, obviously, the Joker chart, which was cool because it was a perfect sequel tease for the next one. It was like, okay, the next stop's the Joker, which... I always thought it was a good idea to not introduce the Joker for the first villain of the trilogy, kind of save him for the second one. I will say, I guess we could, because I'm pretty much done with the review now. I love Ledger's Joker. I love the performance, but Nicholson is the Joker to me because he's actually the character of the comics. I know it's a cool visual. Joker would not burn money. Joker is still a, he still, he is a gangster. He's not going to just burn money. I know that's a cool visual. It is, but he would not burn money in actuality. That that's something that in the law and more in the later years, I'm like, I don't really love it. it he, I don't love the whole anarchist angle, which Joker kind of is, but he's not anarchist in the literal sense. He's still he he still loves money. He's still the clown prince of crime, and I feel like. The Nolan, I get what Nolan was going for, but I do, I don't love that the aspect's missing. So, and I'll talk about that more next Tuesday. Um, but Batman Begins is such, it's so good. I, well, I, the, I was like wild in the theater as a, I was nine years old when this came out, and yeah, I was wild in the theater. I was like, man, DC is back, you know, because up until that point, like I said, we hadn't had a DC film in a long fucking live action film in a long time so and this is a good way to restore batman back to being dark you know so the nolan trilogy will always get love for me for that i have my issues with it more of the later ones not necessarily this one um but in the long run it did save batman and dc you know to where dc started making films again yeah not all of them were hits because you had your shitty superman returns and with your green lanterns. But obviously, eventually, like, you got films like Man of Steel down the line. So it wasn't all bad. But, like, yeah, DC at least was showing, okay, we can make movies again. We're not scared to make films like we were scared before, you know? And I think that's what this film did. And it just sucked that 
Gotham, because Gotham's so perfect in this film, and then they just kind of go away from it in the next two, but it is what it is. Dark Knight is still an incredible film. That, one of my favorite theater experiences, for sure. Um, might be up there, honestly. Definitely one of my favorite comic book film experiences, for sure. Like, such a, that was an experience in the theater, so, for sure. So I can't wait to talk about that next week. Tomorrow, pure luck. And yeah, Thursday, I'm, I'm very much interested on Thursday because I've heard a lot of good things about the the substance. So I'm going to be watching that on Thursday. So, Anyways, guys, I am going to get ready to wrap it here. Um, tomorrow night, some point, me and the boys, we will be talking about AEW Dynamite. We're going to be roasting that piece of shit episode tomorrow. It's going to be bad. I can already tell. And uh, on Pin Down Podcast, no um, no normal live stream on Saturday, but we will be doing um, Bad Blood Predictions, so that'll be on Friday. So subscribe to Pin Down Podcast, and uh, yeah. But as usual, I'm going to talk to y'all later.